Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of the Bolt City Podcast. Dave Pale, Josh Pale, and Mario Heron. Man, guys, this is one of those days where you say it's a 24-hour news cycle, but man, it just keeps going. I mean, right when you get knocked off your feet, all of a sudden there's another story, and there's a bigger story, and a bigger story, and we're not even talking about the games that are happening this weekend. We will get into the games this weekend. If you're tuning in for predictions, of course, we will give them to you, but Right now on the head coaching front of what's going on in the NFL and then all of a sudden at a college football, Josh, uh, since you played for Nick Saban and you played at Alabama, go ahead. I'll let you go first. The GOAT. The GOAT has stepped away and uh, completely screws over Pete Carroll, who steps away on the same day. It's like when Farrah Fawcett <laughs> died on the same day as Michael Jackson. Pete Carroll can't even get his ARP card in peace without Nick Saban kicking his ass. I uh, I just feel bad for um, you know all the Bama fans out there. We're you know we're spoiled. We have the greatest coach of all time, and now we don't. So we have to find a new coach. So people no, nobody feels bad for us. It's just like the Dodgers and the Yankees and Lakers, Celtics. People don't feel bad for the best teams. But uh, today is a sad day. I I think you guys are gonna be okay. I think like you know I, obviously very sad. Saban walks away uh, an era over. But, uh, yeah, I'm not going to sit here and kiss your eyes' ass and go, oh, my God, like, you know, it's been tough. Yeah, I saw plenty of titles. Josh, you've had a lot of fun when you played there. Like, it was all goods and rainbows. Now come back to the scum of the earth with the rest of us and uh, endure some three-loss times, get screwed out of the playoffs. I don't know. C- come down to the rest of us. But it sounds like you guys are going to get Norvell from uh, Florida State, or how you say uh, his name. Don't. No? Don't put, that, don't put that on me, Ricky Bobby. We, we don't want him. He's, <laughs> you he, don't he want him? Be- no. No, he did nothing but cry the last month about Florida State not getting in and then rip Bama, yet he's going to jump over to Alabama. We don't want him. We don't want him. The guy that I want was Dan Lanning from Oregon. He's not going to come now. And then I also want Sarkeesian from Texas, which I hear is a possibility. So I want Sarkeesian. Fingers crossed. My guy. Yeah. Okay. Well, either – yeah, so either way, if you get those two coaches, I think you're going to be okay. I think it's going to be – Mario, let me, Mario let me fill you in on something, okay? My life isn't as great as you probably are trying to make it out to be right now. I have okay. – the Lakers, who are average, I have Alabama football, who's really good, used to be really good. Who knows? Padres suck. Chargers, we, we know about this. I mean, I, Saturdays are my thing, and now they might not be. So I'm concerned. That okay? Uh, point of perspective. This is this was me when Roy Williams left North Carolina. It's like wow, you're you're the child. You're it. You know, we're we're Obi Wan Yana Anakin. You're you're the special one, and now you're gone. And now it's just this sucks. Well, well let, you me, know let me ask you a question. Hold on. Let me ask you a question because people yeah. keep comparing Nick Saban to Bill Belichick situation. I couldn't disagree more on that. I think it's two completely different things. Patriot fans are grateful for what Bill Belichick did for them, but I think they're ready for him to leave, right? Because he's a terrible GM and that team's been ter- terrible. Alabama's been great. Saban's been great. You know, we didn't win this year, but Alabama has no second option. I feel like the Patriots' second option could be better than what Belichick was. So I, I don't think it's comparable at all right now. I'm going to trust on that. I mean, he's right. You look at Nick Saban, who retires at a point where they were the preseason uh, pick for 2024 to win it all next year. I mean, all these guys are rounding up. They're supposed to win the national championship. He had the number two recruiting class, and they're expanding the playoffs. I mean, it's automatic. Alabama is going to be in the playoffs. And for him to step away, yeah, I think it caught a lot of people off guard. You know, it's funny when Josh said Saturday are my things. I mean, uh, let's be honest here. How many people can go through a week and guarantee one day out of the seven is going to be a great day? <laughs> Alabama fans can do that. Go, hey, at least I got Saturday to look forward to. Something good's about to happen. But none of us as sports fans can say that about anything else. Except if you've been an Alabama fan since Saban's been there. It's one of those where you go, wow. Yeah, the guy's been an outstanding coach. Now, uh, I'm going to throw this at Josh because I'm curious about this. Because Mangini was on uh, the herd today, and, and I'll give credit to that. He said something that was interesting that I disagree with. I think Saban will never coach another football game again. He said that he thinks Saban goes back to the NFL, that the college football has become the NFL, and he goes back to the NFL and could end up with a team like with the Falcons or the Titans, where his son lives in Nashville. He has a home in Georgia. Josh, where do you think? Is this it for Saban? Saban cited that his reason for not coaching anymore was his, was his health. So why would he go to the NFL and You think coach? he's lying to Alabama I mean, fans? <laughs> no, dude. Eric Mangini said that? Yeah, the man got a drug test at ESP, ESPN, man. That's that's just dumb. 
Yeah, I, I, I think that's stupid. There's I just think no it's a Fox now, but drug test wherever you no. want. But yeah, pay attention. Whatever. Well, it's, I don't I think it's all. Yeah. <laughs> no. I'm a, I'm a, I can't even say things I'm about to say right now. What else do you have? Do you have anything else? All right, here. I'm going to throw this one at you two guys. I'll throw another one at you. Josh mentioned Pete Carroll retires the same day. And and there's a, a great comparison right there. For anybody who remembers the sad day when Michael Jackson passed away, Farrah Fawcett died the same day. Nobody was talking about Farrah Fawcett, who was an icon in the 70s. And every every guy in the 70s had her poster on the wall. And then all of a sudden, Michael Jackson passes. Everyone's like, Farrah Fawcett's dead? When did that happen? Oh, it happened the same day that Michael Jackson passed. Well, Pete Carroll basically gets fired by the Seahawks. And Nick Saban announces his retirement shortly after. So Pete Carroll, I don't think, is done coaching. They say, oh, he's going to still be part of the Seahawks organization. There's no way. If it was up to Pete Carroll, he'd be coaching. That's what he does. He coaches, which is crazy when you think of the triangle of these guys, is that the Patriots coach before Bill Belichick was Pete Carroll. I mean, that's how long <laughs> Bill Belichick's been in New England. And also, I saw the article that 1980 it was a snippet of how – Nick Saban replaced Pete Carroll at Ohio State as the defensive backs coach. That was crazy. Like the the connection of of these three guys. But I think Pete Carroll coaches again. And I think the team that comes after him, I think it's the Carolina Panthers. What? Yeah, I'm going crazy right now. Why do you say that? Carolina Panthers. Because I think you need I not right now. Um but but Pete Carroll. (laughs) Pete Carroll going to Carolina. I don't. I think honestly, the Carolina job is the worst job in the NFL. I think working for David Tepper is a nightmare. I think everybody knows it. But you need a guy with that age, that resume, somebody that can go in there and stand their ground. And I think Pete Carroll is one of the few guys that would take that job. Pete Carroll's old. He's. I think he's the oldest coach in the NFL uh, up until he, when he got fired. Why would he take the worst job in the NFL when he doesn't have much time left? It's kind of like the Cleo Max situation. Who's knocking on the door? Why would he go to a bad team? Who's knocking on the door? Probably a lot like of people. You, I think Pete Carroll is one of the best yeah. coaches in the league. Do you guys think, think he's going to get a lot of offers? Yeah. Why yes. wouldn't he? Really? I just don't think Why would he, he not? I think that they're, they're going to think that time has passed him by, that he's a defensive coach. We always say guys are leaning towards offense. I, I don't know. I, I'm telling you. What's he Pete's supposed resume to do with is really Smith? good. Just telling you. Okay. Drew Locke, Geno Smith, how do, okay. whatever you How do you want. not look at the Russell Wilson situation and give him kudos? Like, dude, you made that work? It's like Mike he Tomlin. Did. We all think yeah. Mike Tomlin's a great coach. Then you look at Le'Veon Bell shooting off his Insta uh, OnlyFans on Twitter, and AB has like horrible CTE. And we're like, dude, Mike Tomlin's an even better coach than we thought he was. Pete Carroll, yeah. even better coach than we thought he was. When you see this whole Russell Wilson fiasco in Denver, I would definitely would hire you guys. Uh, would you guys? And by the way, I don't think the Panthers is the worst job. I think the Titans is the worst job. That team I stinks. With that. Okay. I think Titans I, I just, is the worst job. I think Amy Adams isn't a great owner, but at the same time, she's not sticking her nose in everyone's business. Tepper fires guys. I mean, you better rent if you get a job with Carolina. He, there's a chance he's going to fire you. I'll, I'm just straight out. Here's the last question I'll ask you on this, both of you guys. If if you're um, a betting guy, Mario, I know you are, is <laughs> Someone Pete Carroll coaching in the NFL in 2024? I'll go 2025. One year off. Oh, dude. What, I, get closer to 100? What are we doing here? He has like three years no, left. Better job. No, when he has, there's a better job that opens up. I wouldn't, dude, I would not take Titans. I would not take the Panthers. I would not take Commanders. Patriots, I would not take that either. I would wait for a, a better uh, position. I would say he's in. I, I kind of agree with you on that, Josh. I think he's going to help Seahawks as best as he can and kind of replace in that role. It takes a year off and he goes back in. Because like you saw in his press conference end of the season, that dude's fiery still. Like he was saying, he's like, I still got a lot left. I still got my edge. I still got this. I got I got that. And Dave, I completely disagree. I think he's a hot commodity. I think everyone wants him. But for a two, th- two to three-year stretch that you'd get out of him, you'd get a lot. You look at what Russell Wilson is now, and you're like, all right, so you got two Super Bowls from that guy, and then you kept the team pretty competitive with that guy? Good for you. You look at Juno Smith, and you go, wow, he did a lot with that guy. That guy has been a backup his whole career, and then now he kind of looks like a starter, but he's not really. He's a hell of a coach. He's done great with, with the Seattle I think Panthers would be a bad job for him. I think he's going to be able to pick his job. I think it's more of a team, more like the Chargers would be like the area where he'd want, where they're almost ready to win as soon as he steps in. We're like the Commanders, Panthers, Titans. Like, bro, that's five 
that's three to four years of grinding hard work just to get that team competitive. Like, I don't think he wants that at all. The Sean Payton route. He's going to take yeah, the Sean, Sean Payton, Payton route where he goes to a yeah. team that's ready to compete, even though the Broncos stink. I think that's definitely the route he's going to take. Do you notice that Pete Carroll, uh, you know how you said Saban takes over for Pete Carroll everywhere he goes? Like, he just, like, that's just what happens. Or Pete Carroll gets replaced by great coaches. Have you noticed yeah. that? Mark Ingram replaces Reggie Bush everywhere he goes. Have you ever thought about that? <laughs> really? No, not till right yeah, now. Yeah, dude. He took over the Saints backfield, right, uh, from yeah. Reggie Bush, and then he took over from Fox from Reggie Bush. Like, twice it happened. Like, I think that's Pete Carroll. It's just everywhere he goes, somebody better uh, steps in. But Mark I think Pete Carroll's a great Heisman coach. Trophy. Reggie Bush doesn't. Yeah. Which is ridiculous. Reggie's yeah. still my favorite college player of all time. 619, baby. But yep. um, I think Pete Carroll is a hell of a coach. I think he's a, commodi a hot commodity. My prediction, though, Mario, are you ready for this? The commander's next coach is going to be Mike Vrabel. Mm. I think Mike Vrabel is going to go to the commanders. The commanders can offer something that no other team can. A completely clean slate with a vision of um, we're only going up. We're only going up from here. We have Bob Myers. We have Harris. We have Magic Johnson. We're going to get you a quarterback in the top five. I, I think the commanders is an appealing job, especially with the new ownership they have. All right, so I like how you brought that up because I think people – the commander's job is very appetizing. Like, there's a lot of good things about it. Like you said, new ownership. You have Bob Myers, who has experience in the NBA, building successful teams. You have a very high draft pick. But can we all remember that when you take that job, you have new owner syndrome? How patient is this new ownership going to be? How patient, right? And they also trade away a lot of their defensive talent. So that defense isn't strong, so there's a lot to build there. You also have, you know, your scary Terry is a hell of a receiver option. When will you be ready to compete? Will that match with where he is at physically? Will that add up? Or are you going to have to trade him away? If you trade him away, then that's more people you got to replace on that offensive side of football and then get your quarterback that you could get in this draft, another weapon, and build the offense even more. I just want to put a pause on everyone thinking that, oh, commander's is a spot, it's a spot. Everyone wants to go, everyone wants to go. It's not... Look, you're not the hot guy at the bar. No, no girl wants to go out with you. Like, not every single one does. Like, I, I don't agree with that part and at all. I think the commander's job is fine to give it a grade. I think it's a B plus. I don't think it's this A that everyone's like rushing towards. But if you're Mike Vrabel, I think that's a good option to go towards. I think it's a better option than New England because I think New England is a disaster. Like, if there's two spots that we mentioned earlier, but like, I would stay the hell away from Tennessee. Hell away from Tennessee. They're doing a complete rebuild and there's talents. Piss poor. I just went to the bathroom and I saw the talent in my toilet, right? That's the same thing as the Patriots. That is the exact same thing as the Patriots. There's no talent on that roster and it's a complete rebuild. I wouldn't want to go near any of those two places. Wow. I tell you what. First of all, I didn't know a hot guy at the bar was a thing, but okay. And then <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> you ever think about I Reggie Bush? I thought it was a hot girl at the bar was saying, but all right. And then no hot guy at a bar was a thing, but I'm sure it is. Two. The Patriots have the, have the resume, and they can get the franchise quarterback and turn a lot of things around this year. I think Vrabel still goes to the Patriots. I hate. That. I think, I, but I think that's where he goes back. That trophy case is crazy full. What does that have to do with now? Like that team because, stinks. And well, they haven't you, done you, anything you, without Tom Brady look, in their existence. I understand that. Nobody understands that more than Vrabel. You need that franchise quarterback. Market. Look, I'm telling. You, it is. It's a big media market. The division, I don't know what you want to say. Is it up for grabs? I mean, the Jets seem like they're never a threat. The Dolphins always major question marks on who they can beat. Tons of injuries on, on that roster over and over again. And Josh Allen's a turnover machine. You never know what can happen in that division. But it's a big media market. You helped win three of those trophies. Why wouldn't you want to go home if you're Mike Rabel? To your point, DC's too, not the a big Jets. media market. DC's a DC's big not. media market. No, it's but not. Dude. It is I not? live there. Okay. No, right, it's, right. it's, it's, it's but. It's terrible. Right. It's so bad, dude. I'm telling you, it's terrible. You don't want to be the there. Ravens. The Ravens are 45 minutes away, and they're better than the Commanders. Not even close. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's true. That's true. Sorry, Mario. What were you gonna say? No, I was gonna say with the division thing with the Patriots. Since you're, I mean, you're gonna suck for the next two years. Um, that Bills roster is pretty old, and that Jets roster is also pretty old. So yeah, you're not gonna win right away if you're available. But like in two years, that division arguably could be yours. You know what I'm saying? Like the Jets could be screwed. Bills could be screwed and you could just wingle right to the top. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I, I don't, I wouldn't want the Patriots job at all. 
why would you want to step in for the greatest coach of all time? You can only be worse, right? I understand what I said earlier about how he sucked at the end, but it's still Bill Belichick. Like you're going to have huge shoes to fill, just like the Alabama job. You're going to have to step in for Nick Saban. It's a tough position. And I, I know he's he's a Patriot, but that makes me even think more. He doesn't want to go back to the Patriots. He wants to start his own thing somewhere else. If you can win with the commanders, I think the city would love you for all the hell they've been through through the recent years. And I think it just makes a lot of sense. It's a tough city. He's a tough guy. I understand Boston's gritty people. He's a gritty guy. But I think it just makes a lot of sense he can go to the commanders. I wouldn't be surprised either if Bill Belichick went to the commanders. I don't get the whole Bill Belichick to Atlanta thing that everybody's talking about. Yeah, no more 28 to 3 jokes, Bill. You're in this building. You know, I mean, what, <laughs> I mean come on, can't wear that ring. No, Bill Belichick, that's my next question. Does he have, is he coaching in 2024? Does Bill get a job? You're hearing rumors that if the Cowboys don't make it to the NFC Championship game, that McCarthy is out and Jerry Jones is interested in him. You're hearing Belichick to the Falcons, Belichick to uh, the Commanders. I mean, again, is Belichick a guy that you're running to hire if he demands, hey, I still want GM responsibilities? He's proven he can't put a roster together. He stinks at evaluating college players. Great at free agent players, stinks at college players. He's terrible. I think it makes a lot of sense for him to wait to see what jobs available. Like the Cowboys, obviously, that'd be a job that you'd want. Even more than the Chargers, I think. That Cowboys roster is really, really good. And the Titans, I said it last show. He's from Tennessee. Uh, he's born in Nashville, has a house in Tennessee. Maybe he'd want to go to the Titans, but that roster stinks. I don't know what the Titans are doing. They've made a lot of questionable decisions. My call, Mario, by the way, is Wilkes is going to be the new coach of the Titans. That's just the way I'm, I'm leaning right now that Wilkes is going to be going over there. I don't know. I think Bill Belichick can, can choose any team he wants, and I think a lot of teams are going to give him the GM responsibilities because they see he's the greatest coach of all time. I think any team that has a QB in place already can be successful with Belichick. But I think if you don't, then it's, I think, stay the hell away. I think that's plain and simple what you saw in New England, right? You give him a young guy, you give him Mac Jones, who you still kind of figure out what he's going to be in the NFL. It ain't going to work, buddy. So I think that rules out a lot of teams that are searching for that QB. So the teams that have a QB in place, aka the Chargers and the Cowboys, I think can be more stable places for him to go to to win right away. Um, I think there's no question in my mind that he's going to coach again in the next season in the NFL because I think Bill Belichick's probably sitting there going, oh, I'm going to get my licks in. Oh, I'm going to come back on everyone that said that I'm done. You know, he has that competitive edge. He has that competitive drive. I think he can do that. Now, do I want him for the Chargers? I don't think so. Like, I would be all set for that just because, again, like you said, the GM responsibilities. I just – Jerry Jones is one thing. You go into me with Jerry Jones, I think him and Jerry Jones can both go – Hey, you worry about the coaching. We'll split GM. We're like, we'll worry about GM because you build enough <laughs> roster. You go and sit. John Spanos doesn't have a couple trophies behind him to say that, right? Like he doesn't. So and I think Bill would walk all over him in that argument. So that's one thing that I, I wrote this down as soon as it happened. I wanted to bring it up to you guys. Um, and I also want to stay on this conversation. So stay on this one, but also think about this. The Saban leaving Bama or retiring from Bama, does that almost give you more confidence. If you're a Michigan fan, does that give you more confidence that Harbaugh will stay? Because Harbaugh goes, the crown's open. The, the you know, there's there's the chair. And it's me and um, Stark going for it. It's me. Why am I blanking on the freaking joy? Kirby Smart. It's all of us going for it. And I just won. So I'm the closest right now. And w- would he want that kind of sort of title that Saban had Versus going to the NFL. Want me to go uh, first? No. Yeah, I'll, I'll go first. <laughs> I, I say no just because they don't recruit the same area. You know, Jim has mm-hmm. the North. Jim's the king of the North, and Saban's the king of the South. So I don't think they recruit the same players at all. Um, and it's just, you know, what's the chances that Alabama is going to play Michigan the national championship every single year, especially with the, the expanded playoff? I don't think it's the yeah. same thing. And because Jim Harbaugh has all these allegations against him, I think that just pushes him out the door even more on top of him winning the national championship. There's nothing else to win. You've already done it. Let's go to the NFL and win a Super Bowl. Has there ever been a coach to win a national championship and a Super Bowl? Has that happened? Uh, yeah, Pete Carroll. Yeah, Pete, Pete Carroll. Carroll. Oh, geez. It's right there. And, um, what's his name? Jim Johnson. Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson. Jim. You know I him on a, you, yeah. you no, that's a how you guys corner? go when you call? That's yeah. how we go. Yeah, okay. we're both buddies. Yeah, I mean, it's been done, I guess. It hasn't been done since Pete Carroll, which is kind of recent, actually. But I think 
Uh, Jim Harbaugh has has new endeavors. I think he's more of an NFL guy to me. He went back to Michigan because he's he's a Michigan guy. But if you look at him as the way he acts, to me, he's an NFL coach. I'll always see him as an NFL coach. Yeah, my opinion is that Jim's gone. I mean, loyalty is not Jim's big thing, you know? I mean, that's just <laughs> – his own brother talks about this all the time. He doesn't latch on to things. You know, this is his history. So Jim did what he was supposed to do. He went back to Michigan. He was raised a Michigan fan. He played at Michigan. His dad was a coach at Michigan. And guess what? He made everybody proud. Now let's get the hell out of this dump. Let's do what I really want to do and prove I'm the best coach in the family. And let's go win a Super Bowl and take one away from my brother. My brother got me last time. Guess what? I don't sleep well at night thinking about it. Guarantee it bothers Jim. He wants to be the best coach in the family. Jim's going to the NFL. He's gone. Just like Josh said, all the allegations. Let me tell you something. It tarnishes Michigan's national championship if Jim stays around and he's suspended for 2024. Everyone's yeah. going to look at that Michigan national championship like the 2017 Astros. You cheated to get here. You were suspended twice during the season. You missed six games. You had to fire coaches for what reason? Because they did what you told them to do? If you stay around, all these allegations continue to grow. If he walks out the door, things get quiet because everything is attached to Jim Harbaugh. So now he goes to the NFL, gets a chance to prove he's the best coach in the family. He's proven he can coach the NFL. It's not like David Shaw who says, I've never coached the NFL. I don't know if I can make the jump. Jim Harbaugh has proven I can win 70% of my games while coaching the NFL. I'm going to go and pick the team. And by the way, as we have jumped around this thing now for almost 22 minutes talking about these coaches, not one time have we associated Jim Harbaugh with any other team in these conversations. We didn't talk about Jim no. with Washington, with Tennessee, with Atlanta. You know why? Because everything is focused on Jim going to the Chargers right now. And if you're a Charger fan, you have to be extremely excited that this has not been brought up in 22 minutes where Jim's the guy. Because Jim is the number one coaching candidate for the NFL right now. There's not another guy there as good as Ben Johnson was with Detroit and everybody spoke about him. This is all about where does Jim want to go. And right now, if the Chargers pay the price, Jim will be head coach of the Los Angeles Chargers. Good news. He will. Yeah, the Chargers Chargers want him, obviously. It sounds like the Chargers want him. It's up to Jim to come to the Chargers. I'm laughing because Mario does a, a gorgeous rundown every show for us, puts in tons of time, and seldomly do we actually follow this thing, which makes me feel terrible. So Mario put first order of business and highlighted it. We did not address that at all yet. So it's the NFL head coaching interview rules. And we got a lot of comments on the last show about, you know, what are the rules? When can you start interviewing coaches? If they're college coaches, if they're NFL coaches, the NFL notes do not address college coaches. Teams can interview these coaches such as Jim Harbaugh right now. There's no waiting period. The Chargers can interview Jim Harbaugh right now. So when his mom says two weeks, Jim wants to think about this position, that's his decision. It's not an NFL yes. or NCAA decision. The Chargers can interview Jim today if they wanted to, and hopefully they're doing it very, very soon because they've hired everybody in the world but Jim Harbaugh. Yeah. And if you're a betting man and you can look at some offshore markets, they actually have like odds for like the Chargers next head coach. Harbaugh leads it and it's like a pick 'em. It's like it's like plus 100. So, you know, take that with what you will. Um, in terms of where that's going and where that steam's heading, but it's fascinating, guys, because I think someone said this today and I couldn't agree more. I think this is the best coaching free agency we've ever had. Like, how often can you say that there's what three to four head coaches that could get you a Super Bowl? Three out of the four have been there already as head coaches. Vrabel, I'm not Vrabel, Harbaugh, Carroll, Belichick. All three have been there. All three could be wanting jobs. Vrabel took a disastrous, not a very strong team to AFC Championship and almost won. So he's knocked on the door. But it's just crazy to sit here and go, as a Charger fan, as someone that you know covers the Chargers and the Charger fan base, you should be pretty excited that we're in this window of where we're looking for a head coach because the teams like the bears who are keeping their coach right now, if I like, they should be kicking themselves going, we have a guy that's medium and there's guys that can take us to the next level out there. And we're not doing anything about it. And I think that's a really bad spot to be in where we're charges right now. You're going, look, we have a chance to really take our team to a whole nother level. And there's plenty of options. There's plenty of ways for us to hit. I think that's really, really good and something to, 
it's something that's just kind of interesting right now, Dave. Because I don't know. I mean, you've been around since Jesus. Like, have you ever yep. seen like a moment where like it's been this crazy? No, this is well. The amount of teams is is normal. I mean, we usually see six to seven yeah. openings. You know, there's always that the, the hot candidate guy, or as you like to say, the hot guy at the bar guy. <laughs> but, yeah, but at the same some time, would say, yeah, some would say. So I, I love how you started something that I think hopefully takes off. This is fantastic. Um, I hope it does. But like, like, like there, there are names out there where, you know, Dan Quinn, for example, Dallas Cowboys, like he's yeah. been around, as I said, for the longest time for the right job. I think everybody thinks he goes back to Seattle, just like most people think Mike Rabel goes back to New England because all that makes sense. The one job that did not open up, by the way, the Bears thing didn't, didn't surprise me. I, I thought two days ago when we were talking, I, I thought the same thing. They're just going to stay with him. Um, so stupid. I'm surprised. I'm surprised Dennis Allen with New Orleans kept his job. That was the one. I thought there was going to be an opening in New Orleans. I thought Dennis Allen underachieved. I thought when you looked at the Saints schedule and you're going, man, this is the easiest schedule in the league, that Dennis Allen kept his job, I thought was kind of crazy. Like, as, as upset as some fans are about the coaching situation, if I was a Saints fan, I'd be extremely upset. But there's always a bunch of guys. It's kind of interesting, too, by the way, that Kellen Moore all of a sudden isn't one of those names that everybody's you know jumping at. Man, if they get an opportunity to get Kellen Moore. I mean, around a year ago at this time, we're thinking, what, Kellen Moore is going to be the Charger OC for one year, and then he's going to be a head coach the next year. And Kellen Moore disappointed. And if it say it's not Kellen Moore's fault, it's because all those guys were injured. I, mean, I think we watched a lot of games where we go, man, Kellen Moore wasn't as good of an OC a, as we thought, right? I saw a thing today on Twitter that said Jalen Johnson for the Bears is a great cornerback. If you were to throw the ball into the ground every single time instead of targeting him, you'd have a higher QBR. Kellen Moore would ha be better off at having a head coaching opportunity if he just did not coach at all this season. I mean, it, it was impressive that he had Justin Herbert to work with and the Chargers looked maybe a little bit more creative than they did with Lombardi. I mean, the, he was one of the more disappointing uh, parts of this whole team. Couldn't agree more. Kellen Moore is an afterthought. The Chargers gave him a head coaching interview just to do it, I think, just out of respect. But I don't think Kellen Moore is a head coaching candidate for any team right now. Would you agree, Mario? Oh, I, one thing I got to ask right back to you, Josh. First down, Chargers. What are they going to do? They're going to run it. They're going to run the ball. It's straight to the A gap. I mean, me, you, my nephew that's three years old all know it. And like it's that, like that, to your point, like that's why, like Kellen, that's why you're sitting here with your, on your hands going, maybe I'll get in another OC job. And if I was you, I'd go beg Debra Fuss to get that job before the enemy gets it. Yeah, I completely agree. I, it's, he sits here. And it was, this is your coming out party to get the head coaching job that you were kind of mentioned in two years ago. And now we're saying, yeah, not even close. He's an afterthought. He doesn't even come close to any of the guys that are in the club right now for that. So, yeah, he's an afterthought. He's a, hey, maybe next time, buddy. You know, Dave, it's like one of those where it's like, hey, keep your head up, kid. You know, you're still young. You're still young. Let's work on closing our mouth while we coach. But <laughs> you're still young, you know, Dave? <laughs> All right, big weekend of playoff games coming up, of course. Look, Mario and I, Mario and I has come down to the guy who picks the best games as far as mm -hmm. odds are. Josh is out of this, by the way. The one guy who covered his ass last week by saying, hey, I love hot dogs. Well, he doesn't have to eat the hot dogs. So, again, the, the bet was, if you're just hearing this for the first time, the loser of last week had to eat a hot dog every five minutes on the next show. Okay? Well... Josh was like, I'm not afraid of that because hot dogs are, are fine with me. Well, it came down to Mario and I because we tied. So we're going to pick games. And you who responded on YouTube through your comments, you guys all want to see what happens this weekend. I'll tell you right now, I'm I'm uh, I'm going to do the show from out of town. I'll be doing it from a hotel room on Sunday. But mm -hmm. I will pay off. If I lose Mario, I will pay off on Tuesday on the next show. Okay? And I'm, oh, yeah. I'm ready to go. If you look in the refrigerator in my house, I just got back from the store an hour ago. I bought 32 hot dogs. Because <laughs> oh you're prepared feel... to lose. I, I am. Because honestly, oh. I do not feel confident about this weekend at all. Usually this is the easiest weekend to me to pick games. But man, I'm I'm looking at these matchups. I'm like, what do you do? What do you do? Like I'm I'm overthinking it, I think, but I do not feel confident. I literally went and bought 32 hot dogs in the refrigerator right now. Wow. 32? <laughs> you're aiming high. Oh, you muted yourself. 
Sorry. It depends guy. how long you're going to make me uh, and a filler buster. You know, if you sit there and drag oh, the show out, I guess I'm still Just, Very you know, true. something bad happens. If I stroke out, my wife's going to kill you. All right. I might go on the ground. You're following me. My wife will go to Chicago and strangle you. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, if we're being honest, and Josh, you can attest, would do numbers. Would be good what for the numbers? show. It would be good for the show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Be really that's good true. for the show. Yeah. Any, I'm a big anything for the show guy. I, I'm all yeah. for it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Do it for the show. Yeah. I do am. it for the show. I will. Do you imagine Josh's interview that he would do after that would happen? Josh would murder that. We would be sick. Yeah. <laughs> good choice, choice of words. Of words. But yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Didn't mean that. Didn't mean that. Didn't mean that. God, dude. I've done some crazy <laughs> things for a show. Man, oh, I jumped into a race car one. Yeah. yeah. Road, <laughs> That's I one of them. Dude. I have two crazy ones. I jumped into a, a race car, all right, for the show, and Three. my car caught on fire. Oh. Three crazy ones. Oh, oh yeah. Well, that okay, car catch on fire too. Yeah, I almost died. Yeah, in the you car. Know, I got two more after that. Oh my yeah. God. Okay. What do you got? I jumped. I jumped into. Uh, I was. I was supposed to wrestle um, for the show, and, <laughs> and dude, every one of these girls that I was supposed to wrestle were literally built like Junior Seau. Like I couldn't believe how big these girls were. Dude, they choked me out. They kicked me in the ribs. Oh, it was it was bad. Like I was sore for like five weeks. I got the crap oh. kicked out of me. Cause they're what am I gonna do? You know what I mean? They're yeah. still girls. Yeah. You I can't go defense. hit them. And it, you're trying yeah. to play defense. The only thing I had over them because they do the headlock. Thank God I had it. Then no one put me in the sleeper hold. But it wasn't just one, by the way. It was like multiple ones, all built like middle linebackers, all on roids, guarantee it. And um and uh, the one thing was men's hands are stronger than women. So they put the grab on you and you can just pull their hands off you. But otherwise, dude, they were crazy strong. Like they're benching three something. Every one of these girls, they beat the hell out of me. It was awful. What's the third one? What about Josh? the third one? Dude, when you got tanked on the air and you had to pick me up from middle school in a uh, <laughs> limousine. <laughs> I wasn't driving. Did you hear that? I wasn't driving the limo. Yeah, it used to be. A, yeah, it was course. a bit I had on, on the radio where alcohol companies would pay us to drink their product on the air. We drank for four straight hours. So they would send a limo to the house in the morning, and then they would wait around. When the show was over, they would take you back home. So I talked to the guy and I said, hey, I was supposed to pick my kid up at school today. Let's drive that big Hummer limousine by the kids' middle school. And then uh, it, it looked cool. It's kind of like the opening from the TV show, Different Strokes, except all these maniacs started jumping in the limo, and I'm just – Chucking out these kids out of the car, just saying, "Let's go." <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. Well, first off, can we get back to that? Cause that'd be a good time, dude. We used to do it like every other week. It was these alcohol companies would would do it. The worst one, <laughs> the worst one, Mario. Uh, Josh's brother was waiting for me to come home, and and man, I, I come get, I jump out of the limousine, I walk in the house. Remember, mm -hmm. I'm not a big drinker, but I've been drinking now for four hours. Yeah, and man, I shut the front door. And just pass out on the other side of the door as soon as I locked it. He was on the outside of the door. Dude, he's just banging <laughs> on that door like Fred Flintstone trying to get in the house. I'm passed out. He's missing his little league game. He's crying. It was awful, man. It was a bad I had to call CPS. Yeah, it's terrible. CPS yeah. Came by. It was a bad deal. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> if it uh yeah. if it if it helps, guys, I have to get a, a belly button piercing for uh the oh show I do on the weekends. Yeah, we do a parlay view parlay challenge, and I lost it. I have to get a belly button piercing. I, I was supposed to get it yesterday, but oh, they moved it to God. next week. Dude, and so I had to shave, like, you know, the happy chill and everything. So I obviously, yeah. I, I, I mean, I don't oh, know right. yet, but I was like, I imagine you have to. That felt like a lot of manhood being taken from you was shaving that. Dude, piercing your belly button honestly sounds like the worst thing I've, I've heard. Like, I'd rather yeah. eat 130 hot dogs than yeah. to get my belly button pierced. Not How long do you have to keep it in? A month. What did oh. Mama? <laughs> what did Mama Heron say? Doesn't know yet. Oh my goodness! I pulled this episode. I, yeah, she's gonna hear this episode and wonder what's what's going on. But like, I haven't told any friends nothing. Like, the only people that know are people I work with. Like, I don't. I haven't told any friends anything like that. I am not looking forward to. It. Like, I don't want to do it, dude. Did the bet should have been they messed it up. The bet should have been not only do you have to pierce your belly button, you have to go back to your hometown for a weekend and wear nothing but a belly shirt. The so the argument <laughs> you, <laughs> the, that should have been the bet. That should have been the bet. Could you imagine? Just for people at home, just please picture a, a Italian and Lebanese family that let's just say have very old school thinking with uh it's one kid with long hair having a belly button piercing. That's from the 
not living in a big city. Just imagine what jokes would come out of that and or thoughts. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. Dude, I want an update on what your mom says when she finds out. Yeah, it's not going to be good. Yeah. yeah. But it's yeah, it's not not looking for. Yeah. Well, the argument at first was they're like, well, you got it. They want it all over Valentine's Day. So like, you get a date. I'm like, dude, if you think I'm just going to get a date for Valentine's Day, that's not freaking happening. That is the cringiest thing I've ever heard in my life. I would never do that. So I was like, I would just get it for a month. I'm not going to get one to get a date for Valentine's Day. And then like, what? Like, I was like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. And that's if if you do that, if you are someone that's just just side rant, because I, I was like, this is very weird. If you're someone, guy or gal, that's like, I just want to get a date for Valentine's Day. Congratulations. You've now entered into the Twilight Zone of weirdness. That is very, very, very strange. That is very, very weird. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. I thought that was very yeah. odd. I'm disappointed that you're getting this piercing in like January in Chicago. Like that doesn't shouldn't yeah. count. It has to be when you have to show it, bro. It's gonna be like th- literally negative two degrees next week. That thing's that's gonna my point to my body. <laughs> that's, not gonna, dude, that's not the issue. You could, you have to be embarrassed in public for people to see it. That's yeah, why pretty, they should have made you go back to your hometown. I'm yeah, pretty, it should be warm at least. No, I'm pretty yeah. embarrassed. Yeah. Dude, like do it in the summer and go sit in the bleachers at Wrigley with your shirt on. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. <laughs> if you ever, if you're ever watching a Cubs game and you and you see yeah. Mario Heron in the bleachers with his shirt off, no one that I've been served too many, and two, just make sure that I've never seen again. Dude, when the batter has to call time because there's a reflection of something in this in the crowd, it's the yeah. guy's Mario's belly button ring. I can't tell Good you God. how weird it looks just even without like hair All right. around. It's it's, <laughs> it's weird, dude. Anyways. Oh All right. All right. Yeah, wow. games. All right, let's pick the games. All right. All right. You want me to do it since I'm the one keeping track this time? Or you, I'll write it down. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, I'll, I'll All write right. it. I got it written down. All right, we'll no, right. no, 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 no. Uh, I don't down. know. We, you shut your that? mouth. You don't, yeah, Josh writes it down. I don't, I don't know why you. you. That's very frustrating that you say I'm cheating. All right. Okay. That's fine. All right. Here we go. We got first game on Saturday. Browns at Houston. The spread is Cleveland minus two. What do you guys have? Dave, do go you want to go Mark. first? No. Oh, I want okay. you to go first. This is one <laughs> I, I'm not so sure about. Uh, This is easy for me. It's Browns, 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 Browns. First playoff start for CJ Stroud. First playoff uh, coaching game for D'Amico Ryan, pl- first playoff star for Will Anderson, first playoff star for Nico Collins against Joe Flacco with live experience against the, one of the top defenses in the NFL. I don't care about the road struggles for the Browns. I will take the points with the Browns, 110%. Okay. Experience versus inexperience. Because the Browns have that crazy trophy case. Is that why? <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll tell you what, the safe move for me, Mario, would be just to pick the Browns now too, right? Because I'm not sure. This is one yeah. of the games I'm not sure about. The safe move would be, well, I'm going Browns also. That way, it's just a wash. If I if I if we both lose, we lose together. I'm not so sure, but I'm not going to do that. Okay, all right. We love that. I'm, I'm going Texans. I'm going Texans. I'm going Let's opposite go. you just because I don't know what to do. Okay, awesome. We like that. All right, next game we have Dolphins in Kansas City. The spread is Chiefs minus four and a half. What do you got, Mario? So this game's like incredibly, incredibly hard. Um, right. The thing that Dolphins on the road this year, when they played hard teams, they've sucked. Bills forty eight to twenty at Bills. Eagles thirty one seventeen at Philadelphia. Ravens fifty six nineteen. IFC KC won earlier this year. Dolphins secondary no Xavier Howard or just defense. Uh, Holland is questionable. Chubb's gone. Phillips is gone. I'm going to take the Chiefs and the points, just because I feel like at one point we're going to get Mahomes. At one point we have to get Mahomes. So I'm going to take the points. I'm not confident in this at all. And outdoors, outdoors, cold. It's going to be really cold. Might be one of the coldest games in NFL history. It's supposed to be below zero. It's supposed to feel like below zero. Last time I saw it, it was supposed to be minus 12. Um, and it sounds crazy to pick a dolphin in the freezing cold weather. I'm not sure at this game at all. I'm just not, not sure. The four and a half just seems a little bit high for me. I just don't trust KC. Uh, again, you've had these injuries with the Dolphins. You have Mozart. You have uh, Jalen Waddle. Uh, Tyreek Hill's not 100%. Mahomes does extremely well at home, but I'm, I'm going to go Dolphins. I'm going to shake it up again. Okay. 
Nice. We like that. All right. We got Sunday. Early game is Pittsburgh in Buffalo. The spread is Bills by 10, which is unbelievable for a playoff game. All right, Dave, you go first. That's a tough one. TJ Watt not playing, right? Nope. Okay. I'm going. Um, Sounds crazy to say that with the Steelers, man. 10 points is a lot of points. I think TJ Watt's that important. Um, God dang it. I man, I hate this game. You know, it's frustrating because Josh <laughs> Allen's a turnover machine. <laughs> um, damn it. All these are tough. Am I, am I wrong? I feel like every one of these is crazy hard to figure out what you're going to do. Damn. Um, I feel like Billy Madison, you know, English. Yeah. <laughs> Math. It's going to be tough. I'm going, I'll go Bills. I'm going to go crazy. I'm going home team. Damn. Okay. I do not know. Please do not bet any of my picks. Good, Mario. Trust me. We're not. We're not. You're muted, dude. You can't hear you. You're muted, yeah. guy. Muted. I know. That Thumb just, boy. it did it. Did all the accident. I actually don't know what happened, but um, I'll say this: very cold game, going to be freaking brutal once again. Big number, I think Tomlin in the cold is very good, and I'll take them to cover. I they're going to lose hundred ten percent. There's no way the Hell Steelers win, but I think Tomlin can get the guys ready enough where they cover in this game. I would not bet this at all. Yeah, me neither. So you guys have gone different on every game so far. Yeah, going crazy. This could be easy to figure out. It's going to be so easy. Yeah. Next game is Packers at Dallas. The spread is Cowboys minus 10. What do you got, Mario? I'm uh, Excuse me, Cowboys minus 7. Excuse me. Oh, that's a big one. So this is the game I've actually had the biggest problem with because Cowboys at home – unbelievable like yep. unfreaking believable but then you look toward that sideline and you see an idiot with a headset and that's mike mccarthy and that's what scares the living hell out of me it's like what the hell is he gonna do i think <sighs> pick your team I, go packers they're gonna screw me I'll they're gonna cowboys me. i'll make it easy for you i'll go cowboys yeah, you want to stay, stay the course? We go different. No, I'll burn this one with you, Cowboys. That's great. Yeah, up yours. Okay. Up oh, mine. I'm the guy that picked first. What are you talking about? Go ahead. God. See, I think this is the hardest game all weekend. It's the late game on uh, Sunday. It's going to be the Rams in Detroit. Lions minus three. What do you got, Dave? Going Rams. I like the way the Rams are playing wow. right now. They have experience. They have an experienced coach. Um, Matthew Stafford going back. Man, if there's any time he's going to be focused, I, I like the Rams. I really do like the way the Rams are playing right now. I mean, hell, they beat the guiding Niners with Carson Wentz. I like how the Niners, by the way, don't play the move. Oh, we played all our backups. Really? Because I'm I'm looking at touchdown passes on your, your Pro Bowl quarter, cornerback. I mean, don't pull that move. Your team lost in a game that didn't matter. Just say that. You beat us in a game that didn't matter. Don't sit there and say we sat all our players. Don't pull that that Florida State stuff. That's that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I've had enough. Um, Go ahead. Here's one thing I'll say. Okay. Rams, 10th in passing offense. Detroit, 27th in defending the pass. Stafford comes home. What is McVay going to want to do? What is Stafford going to want to do? Sling it and deal it all day long. Give me the Rams plus three every single day of the week. Stafford's going to go for Hall of Fame numbers this game. Like, Hall of freaking Fame numbers. It's going to be unbelievable. I'll take Rams all night long. Okay. Wow. I was so surprised. I for sure you'd go Detroit. I'm right, not. He, knows I, he knows I made some crazy picks at the beginning. He's playing it safe. Oh. You know, guys, a body button piercing and a skirt on. Yeah, go ahead. That sounds cool. We got, we got Monday football <laughs> on a holiday. Um, playoff football on a Monday. We have Eagles. At Tampa Bay, which is weird, but the Eagles are going to Tampa Bay. The spread is Eagles minus three. What do you have, Dave? I'll go first. Buccaneers. This is where we defer. Eagles. Good. Wow. I yeah. the Eagles take, every take, week, and I've failed with the Eagles. I'm yeah. Gonna, take Baker. Take Eagles Baker anymore. banged up. 
Okay, look, the Eagles lose this game. First first game, okay? Eagles lose. Do they fire their okay. coach? Josh, what yes. do you think? Oh, my God, yes. I think the dude can't keep a locker room together. And I understand A.J. Brown's a problem, but that is the most stacked roster in the NFL right there with the 49ers. That team's stacked. You, you got to beat the Buccaneers, dude. The Buccaneers weren't even supposed to be in the playoffs this year. They got Baker Mayfield as their quarterback. I know he had a good year, but it's Baker Mayfield. Like, what are we doing? On a confidence level, on a scale of 1 to 10, Mario, how confident do you feel on these picks? I'm a 1. Like, I can look at every one of these and flip it right seven? over. 7? 7. Oh, wow. I'm that's really that's confident. And yeah, the only thing that scares me is I was so confident about the Eagles today until I saw that Hurts is, um, hasn't thrown a football since Sunday, which scared me. But the rest of them I feel fine, besides the Packers-Cowboys. The rest I feel kind of fine. Okay. Famous last words. Famous last words. I can't believe, I can't believe you didn't words. pick Packers. You pick the Packers every week, and you didn't pick the Packers. Damn it. All right. See what happens, man. See what hot dogs, whose future they're in. Good news is Mario's lost a big bet recently, so hopefully the obviously it continues. <laughs> yeah, I'm not feeling too hot. Yeah. <laughs> 2024 has kind of been a little disappointing for all of us. All right. Yeah. So we're doing the show Sunday night, correct? Yes. yes. When are we doing the show? Okay, we're doing the show Sunday. Sunday. So by the time we do the show, I'm guessing the Rams Lions game will still be going on. Is that correct? Yeah. Do you want to wait till yes. Monday, or would you rather do it on Sunday? I'm asking you guys. What? Do you, well, you can say that you push it all the way back to Tuesday. Because we have to, then we're going to go. What happened on Monday? So Do tomorrow, we Tuesday, whatever Mario wants. Executive decision. Oh crap! I mean, Tuesday we get all the results, so we yeah. can do an early pod Tuesday. So how about this? We'll do an earlier pod Tuesday, so it's out. We usually do at three. We'll just record earlier than three. The th three yes. my time. That works. Perfect. All right. Get get your hot dogs. Well, wait, wait, yeah, wait. yeah. Wait. Hold Wait, on, why bro. do we have to record Hold earlier on. on Tuesday? What's the purpose? I don't know. I was just saying that. <laughs> Hold on a second. Josh was on an airplane yeah. that day. You're Josh oh. on an airplane. Oh, I am on an airplane. Head coach in DC. Um, so. <laughs> that new head coach in DC. You just spilled the beans here. Breaking news. Um, I landed afternoon in Nashville. Okay. We can go Monday, Tuesday. I can go late Tuesday. Whatever works for you. Dave? Just, we'll just go Tuesday. We'll just go Tuesday. We'll figure out a time. Okay. And then we'll Sounds keep good. the fans. Yeah. We'll let the fans know. We'll speed it out. All right. We'll right. figure it out. Either way, we're going to get stuff going. Doesn't matter. Doesn't yeah. matter. Hell, I'm, if we have to go uh, Sunday, we'll do it. Either way, if you subscribe, guess what? You're going to get a notification. You're going to yeah. know when the show goes out. <laughs> That's true. That's if you subscribe, if you subscribe, you're going to know. And if you don't subscribe, <laughs> you're not going to know. So choose your route and be wise. <laughs> be wise. <laughs> You might see the worst thing ever, a hot dog eating contest. All right. So, again, we want the thumbs up. We want the, you to subscribe. At the same time, you listen to the Bolt City Podcast through the Odyssey app. That's fantastic. If you watch through <laughs> – what the world is going on? If you watch through YouTube and <laughs> you leave a comment, we appreciate that. Dude, I don't even know what you're doing with your effects back there, Mario. That completely that threw cool? me off. I did it in a meeting on accident, and I've been doing it ever since, dude. So, yeah, thumbs it up. You get fireworks, baby. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, that is insane. All right. Good deal. So, again, appreciate the comments. Um, <laughs> man, that was that was a lot of fun. All right. Well, hopefully we have some good news for you as far as head coaching news, rumors, everything else. See if any other jobs open up. Uh, kind of surprised a little bit that, uh, again, the Saints didn't make a move. Maybe the Jets didn't make a move. There could be more openings coming by the next show. We'll talk about those as well. For Mario Heron, Josh Pelle, I'm Dave Pelle. We'll see you next time.